Well, thanks very much for that introduction. Again, I'm Dave Fionn, and usually I come here as a, a Rotarian, and today I'm coming to you as a member of your community. I was born in Woburn. I was brought up on 1030 Main Street. But anyway, today I'm talking to you about a uh, project that <coughs> I've just recently been involved with that is uh, of, of concern, I think, to everyone in Woburn. And I think that for 25 years they've been trying to do a development behind the home where I lived. And I'll show you the, it's the aerial map, and this is the, the property. And they proposed a whole series of different types of projects. Long story short, a 40B permit was approved in 2006 after Woburn fought at the Superior Court and tried to stop it. Over a period of five years, nothing happened. Developer ran out of money, ran out of interest, whatever it was. A new proponent came in, they sold the property, and now they're trying to redevelop it. And I just want to say that, you know, I, I, got, I got involved in it just over the past few months. And the more and more I looked into this, the more and more concerned I was. And the more and more information I found, the more concerning it was to me, and I felt it was important to bring it to the people of Woburn so they can understand really what it is. You know, lots of times you don't know really what's going on. And, and unfortunately, <clears throat> too many times in a 40B type situation, a lot of the rhetoric revolves around not my backyard. You know, I don't want affordable housing in my backyard. I don't want a big building in my backyard. And the information I'm going to share with you today goes well beyond that. It doesn't go beyond the fact that we don't want a big building. We understand that there's a approved project that's going to go there. We're concerned about the current developer, which is Dolphin Companies, coming in, making significant changes to the existing project. This is the aerial view of the mountain from Google Maps. As you can see, the previous developer, who... Um, from Burlington. I live in Burlington, by the way, right now. I live on the other side of the Mill Pond. And the previous developer basically clear-cut the whole path without an appropriate permit, without nothing. In fact, he clear-cut uh, trees on other people's land. So he basically scarred that whole area, unfortunately. And again, uh, the view you saw in the previous one, that's the view from the top of the mountain. And when I was a kid, we'd climb behind my house, climb up on the mountain, and if you look, it's a panorama. You can see Boston. It's absolutely beautiful. So as I started to kind of look into this, and again, you know, being a Rotarian, it's about the four-way test, and that's what I'm trying to apply to all this. As I looked at it, the first thing I realized was that there is some two water supply areas, I noted in red and blue, that are directly abutting this property. And neither Burlington nor Wilmington was ever notified of any of the activity in this property. In fact, when we talked to Wilmington and talked to Burlington, they were absolutely shocked and flabbergasted at what was going on. If you see here, there's a river. See that river right there in blue? This is, again, a, a Google Maps image, okay? That river feeds the Mill Pond Reservoir, okay? And that river is less than 200 yards from the property. And also on the top there <coughs> are retention ponds from the town of Wilmington. And be, behind that is, remember the Spinazola Dump? The Spinazola Dump, which was capped and unlined, sits behind that. So this project is incredibly close to two major public water supplies. While it won't affect Woburn, if it's the Burlington and the Wilmington one, we don't want to have a civilization blow up on our face again because something happened on a piece of Woburn property. Next slide. If you take a look, this is a map, a map from the Mass GIS system. There's the property in red. See that green area? That's the aquifer that feeds the Burlington water supply. I get less than 200 yards from the aquifer. <clears throat> the developer is proposing to lower this mountain 75 feet. Their current proposal is going to take 411,000 cubic yards of rock out of this. Again, the property, again, as we did research, this is a map of the Mystic River Watershed Association. This property is smack dab in the middle of the Mystic River Watershed Zone. Now, there's a couple of regulations of DEP, I won't go into the boring stuff, but it basically prohibits sand and gravel quarry operations within a watershed. And that's what we're talking about here. Next, everybody drive down and moving up towards Wilmington on a rainy day? Huh? How many people have seen this? Is this area, because it's in a watershed, this area floods all the time. This is a picture taken a couple of Tuesdays ago when we didn't have a very big rainfall. Looking north. The subject property is right there on the green, where the green bushes are. Now, what they're thinking of doing is they're going to increase the total space on the top of the mountain by 400%. Because instead of one building, they're going to build four buildings. So they're going to create hot top, a much bigger hot top area. Where's that water going to go? 
It's going to get out of the street. It's going to create flooding. It's going to create icing conditions, black ice. When my mom was involved in an accident here, she almost died. She slipped on this area was flooded. She got black ice. She spun out. She went over the embankment. It was only remember the old uh, railroad guard, uh, the guardrails with the wires. She get held up by the guardrail on the wire. The car was like this. If she didn't have that guardrail. She would flip the car over. This is the thing that came to light in our last ZBA meeting. Um, Representative Jim Selling, who represents Wilmington, sent a representative there, a former selectman in Wilmington named Suzanne Sullivan, to speak. This, and I was like, when she said this, I was like, well, what, do you, what do you mean? We are less than three-quarters of a mile away from an earthquake fault zone. This is called the Bloody Bluff Fault Zone. So what is two years of dynamiting? I mean, would you go to the San Andreas Fault? It stopped blasting away less than a mile away from the San Andreas Fault? Probably not. We are less than a mile away from the Bloody Bluff Fault Zone. But the other thing is, to the north of this property, you ever heard of the Olin site? Wilmington, there was a huge contamination pool that you head north off of Ames Street. Well, Suzanne Sullivan is the vice president of WERC, which is a committee designed to kind of take care of that site. She said that the contamination crept into all the crevasses in this fault. And her concern is that if we start blasting, that contamination could get released into God knows where, into the public water supply, which is right here. The other one of the issues is, is that when they're going to, we're going to they, they, the developer is going to be loading up triaxial trucks. It's going to take 16,000 truck trips to take the material off the site, which, by the way, they, they're not going to keep, they're going to keep very little on the site, less than 5%, and they're going to truck that to a processing facility, and we estimate they're going to get about $6.2 million in profit from selling the material to the site. This is a, this is a, a sign on Route 38 that limits the truck traffic to 25 tons. Those trucks will be 50 tons. So either they're going to be half loaded, or guess which way they're going to go? Back in the Woburn. Right now, there's a condition on the, on the approval permit that says they're going to go north to Wilmington, because that's where they're going to end up. They're going to end up in the Wilmington North Reading Line. But if, if that, if that, that road goes there, they're going to turn around and go to Woburn. When uh, someone talked about quarry operations, one of the things that that you have in a quarry operation that's unavoidable is silica dust. Whether they just merely remove the rock and load it into a truck, or when they process it on site, you have silica dust. It's inevitable. And unfortunately, silica dust, according to OSHA, this is the definition from OSHA, is a carcinogen. Now, when you look at most quarries, where are most quarries? Are they on top of a mountain? They're in a valley. There's a reason for that. Because when they start mining and, and excavating rock, that dust will stay in the valley. Now we're talking the top of a 200-foot mountain. When they start mining and excavating and blasting, where that silica dust going to go? Up in the air, and it's going to spread across the community. Right? Well, I mean, what are all the? I mean, what's everyone driving on 38 going to work now? I mean, this is almost in a year and a half to two years of blasting. And silicosis, which is the disease you get. When you breathe in rock silica dust, there's no cure. It's often fatal. One of the other issues that we have with this project is that it doesn't allow Woburn to meet the 40B limit. So if this was project was as designed and, and permitted, got Woburn over 40B, it'd have a lot more merit. But we believe there's two ways of looking at 40B from the, from the uh, requirement. One is if you look at it from the number of units. And Woburn is really short from a unit perspective. But the other way is look at it from land area. And there was a study done in 2006, commissioned by the city, that analyzed all the land and movement from the 40B perspective. And the analysis was it was 19 acres short. Now, we believe that there's some things that they forgot in the analysis. Plus, since 2006, the city has acquired more land that's going to change that dimension. So we believe that if we were to redo the analysis again, we would be over the 40B limit. In summary, my goal here today was to educate people about this project. The mayor is against it, has come out publicly against this project. Three of the selectmen that Alderman and I talked to have, are against this project. Alderman Gailey, Raymond, and Detucci. And I haven't talked to any of the aldermen. But more importantly, this is not the health concerns created by this project. We believe far away the need for affordable housing. Now, we know that we need to get affordable housing. In my town, Burlington, what, what they did was, 
they engineered a very creative land swap to do that. There was a piece of property that was that the pro the project wasn't right for the property. They swapped with the developer on a three way swap, and they were to build the affordable housing and do that. It was uh, it happened uh, like five six years ago. So what I'd like to ask folks is a couple things. We have a Facebook page, facebook.com, stop the movement court. We would love you if you went on there and liked it so you can get updates on what's going on. We're going to post regular updates to this page. We'd ask you to share with your friends in Woburn because I believe this is not just a North Woburn issue. You know, unfortunately, if you look at it from a typical 40B perspective, oh, not in my backyard. It's a North Woburn issue. But if you're looking at the aquifer, the silica dust, the traffic that's created, it becomes what it's, it's affecting three towns. It's going to affect the water supplies at Burlington and Woburn and affect at Burlington and Wilmington and affect Woburn. So share it with your friends. And then there's a Zoning Board of Appeals meeting on June 20th. It's 7 o'clock, and we'd love to have folks come. Oh, by the way, the former mayor, uh, Mark Laughlin, is also against this project. We'd love to have people show up and voice their opinions.